The New Testament Church welcomes you to join us as Pastor Majid Saloum leads us in seeking a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, changing us from glory to glory. Instead of sin, he gave us righteousness. Instead of the curse, he bestowed blessings upon us. He gave us resurrection from the dead. When we, after we got buried with him in water baptism, he raised us up into the newness of life. God has reversed everything for us. We were going in the wrong direction and God reversed it and called us and taught us to walk in his ways. So how many like to walk in the ways of the Lord? Because the ways of the Lord are the best ways because the other way is wrong and the other way is not beneficial. But God's way is different. And he helped us to reverse our walk. We were away from him, and now he brought us nigh by the blood of Jesus. We were made nigh by the blood of Jesus. Acts 2.24. But God, this is what he did. But God has raised him up, talking about Jesus, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. This is an important scripture, by the way. It was not possible for Jesus to stay dead. Shall I say it again? It was not, he died. And and I'm sure the devil rejoiced that Jesus died. Because he didn't understand what was going to happen next. Okay? He thought that Satan thought he won the victory. Okay, but Jesus proved them wrong. Because he said, you build, you destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. He was talking about himself. He raised himself up. Did you know that? Why? Because why couldn't he stay dead? Because he was the word. The word in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Without him was nothing made that was made. But through him all things were made. So Jesus wasn't, didn't start his life with Mary, when he was born of Mary, he was there before. In the beginning was the word. Before we came into existence, Jesus existed. He's pre-existed. He's pre-existent. Praise God. But God has raised him up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible for him to stay dead. That he should be held by death. Okay? It was impossible for death to keep its grip on the way, the truth, and the life. It was impossible. To keep, for for death to keep its grip. It's impossible. He had to arise. Whether you like it or not, whether the devil liked it or not, he had to rise up. If he didn't rise, you wouldn't be here 
we will have a club and not Christians. He had to rise. In fact, the Bible says you're going to rise up too. He's going to raise us up. Even after we die, we're going to be raised up. And if Christ didn't rise, if we, we don't get raised up, then Christ didn't rise. <coughs> Acts thirteen thirty seven. But he whom God raised again saw no corruption, no decay. He didn't see any decay. His body was glorified after resurrection. That's why he could go through the walls to speak to his disciples. But he had no decay. So, in the beginning, God brought life back to earth. When the earth, in verse 2, the earth was without form and void. It was covered with water. There was nothing but death on the earth. There was no fish, no light, nothing alive. All plants were dead. All trees were dead. Everything was dead. And see, God's, that's God's specialty, is to raise the dead. So the first thing God did, was his spirit was moving upon the face of the water, fluttering upon the face of the water. He said, light be. Yehi or, as the Hebrew language. Yehi or. Or means light. So, so in the beginning, you see, God's purpose was to reverse death. God's purpose was to, to reverse death and decay. You'll be glad about that when you, when you find out. And maybe you already know. There's no more decay in God because God gives life. He is in us, the hope of glory. We've received life from him. When we were dying and going on our way to hell, and God delivered us and saved us. So when God does things, he does things in an orderly manner. Beginning... We're talking about the beginning, you know, Genesis chapter 1. Beginning with the first day of creating and making. Every day was done in regular sequence. And God always prepared whatever he did. One day he prepared for three days later. Can you remember that? Is later. Can you say three days later? Okay. Day one, he prepared for day four. That's three days later, right? Day two, he prepared for day five. Day three, he prepared for day six. So can we remember that? Three days later, you can add... If not, you can ask your son there, Scott, next to you. <laughs> He'll add it for you. Three days later. So day one, God spoke light into existence. And he was thus preparing for day four. Are you with me? Day one... He spoke light. He said, let there be light, or the Hebrew, light be. And he prepared for day four. Now, what did he do on day four? Because there was a light on day one, 
Therefore, he created the light holders, the sun, the moon, the stars. So day one prepared for day four, three days later. Okay? So the sun, the moon, the stars. I showed you the sun and the moon over there, but you can picture the, the stars giving lights. Light holders. Now, in the Hebrew, the word or means light. It comes from the word light, or means light. And in, in day four, he didn't say or, he said me'or. Me'or is the lamp or the thing that, the, 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 the thing that carries the light. So he harnessed the light in the light holders on day four. Day one, the light was there. Then he harnessed it in the light holders. Day two, he made the firmament and space, okay, and the seas. That's what he did. He moved the waters beneath from the waters above and made the space. Are you listening to me? He made space and he made the seas. That's day two. So what do you think he did on, ver on day five, the fifth day? He created the fish of the sea and the birds of the air. Okay, the fish of the sea, that includes the giant fish, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so God is a God of order. So what did he do on day three? Day three, he separated the waters that was covering, covering the earth and moved the waters away so that the dry land appeared. Day three, you can read it later. If you want to read it now, you will miss the message. Okay? But it's chapter 1 of Genesis. He moved the water away so that the dry land appeared. So when the dry land appeared, that's day 3. It pre prepared for three days later, which is day 6. What did he do on day 6? He created the uh, what? Animals and all the creeps, I mean the creeping things <laughs> on the earth. And thank God we were not creeping things, he created men. Now that there's dry land, he created men. Okay, Adam and Eve. Amen? So God is a God of water. And he brought life back to the earth. Okay, because the devil had destroyed the earth. Um, that's a theory, but I believe it. That's what happened. Amen. So let's talk about, a little bit about, uh, last week I talked about history. A little bit uh, history in the making, still in the making. Bob, we want to talk about science today. Are you ready for our science lesson? Okay, let's talk a bit about thermodynamics. It's a big word, but don't be scared. We want to talk about thermodynamics. It is a study of energy in all of its different forms. The first and second laws of thermodynamics states that energy is conserved. In other words, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be exchanged. Now, this is science we're talking. 
Okay? It can, it can only be exchanged for a different kind of energy. For example, if you push a boulder off a cliff, you convert gravitational energy into kinetic energy. Okay, you can get the tape or the CD, whatever, and, and uh, memorize it to be a scientist. Okay, but there is another law at work, and it's the reason why ice cream melts in summer day and coffee cools in the winter day. The second law of thermodynamics introduces something called entropy into the equation. Entropy, E-N-T-R-O-P-Y, entropy. It basically states that if left to its own devices, everything moves towards ran uh, randomness and disorder. Cars rust. Toys break. Even big toys break. Even when you have a big car, it breaks. That could be your toy or your spouse, whatever. Some people, you know, they handle a car better than their spouse. And food rots. And the kids' room get real messy real fast. And if you are a parent, I'm sure you'll agree with me. Okay? <clears throat> Entropy, E-N-T-R-O-P-Y, somebody defined it, defined sin as entropy. Sin is moving toward disorder. The end result is meaningless existence. Proverbs 29:18 Without a vision that is dream or revelation my people perish. Perish from the Hebrew language para P A R a in the Strong's. I added another A, para, because there's no letter in English to describe the original Hebrew letter. But it sounds like para, and that's strong 6544. Could be translated entropy. Okay? Perish. To corrupt, to become corrupt, to go downhill, could be translated entropy also. It refers to the process of decay. It refer refers to perishable food that is past its prime. In other words, it's rotten. That's when you don't have a vision. But what happens when you have a vision? Vision is revelation, and it's negentropy. Don't be afraid of the word. It's a negative of entropy, or the opposite, negentropy. Okay? N-E-G-E-N-T-R-O-P-Y. It's negentropy. Negentropy is the increase of revelation. The result is the decrease of disorder. If sin is entropy, 
then vision is negentropy. The only way to prevent entropy, which, which is chaos and confusion and decay and perish, perish, perishables, the only way to prevent entropy is to introduce some outside energy source that counteracts it. A refrigerator, for example, when it's plugged in in an electrical outlet, it produces cold air. And that cold air will keep the food from rotting and the ice cream from melting. Are you with me? Now, if you unplug the refrigerator, it's going to turn, everything is going to rot and decay. If you un disconnect the refrigerator from its energy source, entropy will take over again. Are you with me? This is what happens to us spiritually. So I'm done with the, with, the, with, the, with the philosophy of science. Okay? Amen? Okay. Uh, this is what happens to us spiritually. When we are disconnected from God, entropy takes over. The way to prevent entropy is to be connected to God, to the source of power, to plug in to God. Entropy began in the Garden of Eden when man disobeyed God and ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's entropy, beginning, beginning of entropy. Because God warned. When you eat of it, you will surely die. First time, the word die is mentioned. When Adam sinned, entropy was introduced. The process of decay and disorder and disharmony began. You know what Romans 8.21 says? We are in bondage to decay. And the whole creation is crying out to be redeemed from the bondage of decay. But thank God Jesus came to set the captives free. You're no longer in bondage. When you think about redemption, sanctification, and glorification, you realize that they're all about reversing the curse. It's all about reversing the spiritual, relational, emotional, and intellectual, and physical entropy. In John 10.10 10, where it says, The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy, that's entropy. The thief, the devil, came to bring entropy. But Jesus said, I'm come that you may have life. That's a reverse of entropy. And give it to you more abundantly. Amen? And that's called negentropy. What Jesus came to bring is negentropy. Let's uh, look quickly at Revelation 21 verses 1 through 4. And I saw, this is, we see negentropy here. I saw a new heaven and new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no more sea. I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. He's not talking about this earthly Jerusalem, that's entropy. He's talking about a heavenly Jerusalem, that's negentropy. Okay. I heard a great voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself 
shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, no more entropy, no more death, but negentropy, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. The end of physical and emotional and relational entropy. Everything is going to be new. Revelation 21.5 And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write for those words are true and faithful. It sounds like the end of entropy. God will release us from the second law of thermodynamics. He will bring order out of chaos. Instead of entropy, it will be negentropy. He, God, is in the business of reversing the irreversible. That's what the empty tomb did and represents. No decay. It couldn't decay. He couldn't back to, go back to earth because he was not from the earth. He was the Lord from heaven. No decay. He couldn't stay dead. The first man was from the earth earthy. Isn't that true? The last Adam. The second man is the Lord from heaven. The Lord from heaven couldn't stay dead because he was made out of the word, not made out of dust. Unto dust and shalt thou return. That's people who made out of dust. That's us. But Jesus was not. He was the Lord from heaven. The word became flesh. God wants to reverse the emotional, intellectual, and relational, and physical, and spiritual entropy in your life right now. He is replacing it with negentropy. Colossians or Galatians 3.13 says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Thank you for watching this edition of Glory to Glory. If you would like to support our ministry, please text NTC Gives to 77977. And please join us each week for Sunday School at 9 and service at 1030. From the New Testament Church and Pastor Majid Saloon, May the power and blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.